It's The Drive on ESPN Blacksburg, and a good evening to all of you. Getting updates on the boys' soccer game. Like the legend of the Phoenix. <laughs> Harris Solomon scored the first goal for Blacksburg with 24 minutes left. Uh, 20 minutes left in. Tab tied it up. Travis Bishop just sent me a text message. 2-1 in favor of Blacksburg. They just scored again. Uh, so they have taken the lead in that boys' state semifinal. So keep on rolling, boys. We're uh, we're pulling for you back here at home. Uh, J.W. Martin joining us, Motor Miles Speedway. And finally, man, you got some weather for crying out loud. Nothing but blue skies today, Paul. <laughs> it's, a, it's a change for the better, and we are just thrilled that we will have a weekend unimpeded by <laughs> bad weather. It's going to be great. And I'll tell you what, man. Last weekend, uh, you guys you guys struggled all weekend to try to get the racing in. I saw at one point a couple of pictures on Twitter. The drivers were out driving around trying to dry off the track. Uh, were you guys ever able to get the racing action underway for the uh, Kessler Contracting 150 uh, last weekend? Unfortunately not. We yeah. fought it until about 9.30 or so, late into the evening. Yeah. Uh, what you referenced was an awesome show of solidarity from the drivers. Yeah. Everybody pitched in to help, but unfortunately, Mother Nature won won the night. Um, we had rescheduled that event for later on in the year. Okay, um, cool. Good news is we're not going to lose any dates. Nice. Um, and um, we're just, uh, you know, putting that behind us, moving forward, and uh, thank you. Thank goodness we've got an excellent forecast for tomorrow. You do, and you're going to run a couple of Twin 75 races tomorrow. Now, for our listeners that don't know what that means, what are the Twin 75s? So we split up a 150-lap race uh, into two Twin 75-lap races. Uh, it's just a format adjustment, uh, kind of switching it up for the race fans. Um, it actually adds a race. Okay. So we're doubling the races. Um, and we like to think that it doubles the excitement on track. Yeah, absolutely. And and from a driver's standpoint, uh, I know you've got Ryan Repco there with you. Uh, Ryan's out of Denver, North Carolina. From a driver's standpoint, uh, Ryan, uh, thanks for joining us. How do you guys, do you guys like doing the Twin 75s, or, or would you rather r run a 150? Well, first off, thanks for having me on the show. And I, I like the Twin 75s okay. because I think it's, I think it creates better racing because you're not having to conserve tires for a 150-lap race to have mm -hmm. something there at the end. It's more of a dash kind of format. and you're, it, it, I think it creates better racing. And I also like having two races in one night, whereas if my car wasn't very good for the first race or I didn't like something about it, we can tweak it and try to make it better for the second 75 so we have a second go at it. So that's something I really like about the Twin 75 format. Now, if our listeners are listening to Ryan going, man, wait a minute, how how old is this guy? Ryan, <laughs> You uh, do you even have a driver's license yet? Can you even drive on the streets in the New River Valley? Um, no, sir. I'm actually <laughs> from Charlotte, North Carolina, but I only have a permit. I don't even have my full-blown driver's license. I should be getting that at the end of this summer, though, just in time for my junior year of high school. Nice, nice. Ryan is 16 years old. He is one of the up-and-comers in the sport of NASCAR racing. Uh, he is in his rookie season in the late model division. Ryan, how did you get involved with racing, and, and, and at what age did you start racing? Because... At 16, man, you're still pretty doggone young. Um, yes, sir. When I was um, eight years old, I started racing at the pit in Mooresville. And there we met a lot of families that were racing quarter midgets. Um, Todd Gilliland was racing there and also racing quarter midgets at the same time. Um, a kid named Sam Hatfield that now races HBD midgets, he was racing um, go-karts and quarter midgets. So they told us that that would be a way to really – kind of start my career quarter midgets a lot of um kids have gotten their start there so when i was nine years old we went through the rookie training process and in my first race i think i ended up second okay and um i ran those for five years and then i got i think i i won 20 championships wow. i had 15 track records and 115 wins across um local regional and wow. national and then in 2014 i started racing limited late models at motor mile speedway and um, we ran it part-time. We didn't really run all the races just to get experience in the car. And points is kind of a stressful deal, and you don't really want that in your first year. You sure. kind of normally want to just kind of ease your way into a new car. But um, the following year, we ended up getting a win on, I think, July 24th. 
So that was very exciting. And this year, we're I'm in my rookie year of late model stocks, and I already have a poll and a few top fives. Nice, nice. So, what for our listeners that have never raced before? What's the biggest different difference as, as far as a driver is concerned between the quarter midgets and and getting into the late model cars? Well, really, just the difference is you race in the bigger car with more torque and. The biggest thing is power steering. It's a lot easier to turn the car in these things than quarter midget. Okay. So it's a lot easier to be kind of jerky with the wheel and not smooth. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I kind of had to learn when I was first starting out. But, um, yeah, just when you get to the gas, there's kind of a rotating feeling. That was another thing I had to get used to. Okay. And passing is very different, too. You have to uh, – there's a totally different approach to passing in these cars. Now, let me ask you this. Can you pull off the bump and run if you have to? If you have to, I guess if it's 100% necessary, <laughs> but um, I try to race as clean as I can. Sure, absolutely. Now, when you're out there racing, um, because, uh, again, being a young guy in this sport, uh, do you feel like you got to give the uh, the top guys a little bit more room out there, or are you going to race them as hard as you would anybody else? Well, I mean, I race everybody hard, and they race me hard, too. I think so far everybody's respected me as a driver, not even though I'm as young as I am. Sure. And it's been fun. A lot of them have been really nice and have mentored me and um, given me advice on how to do stuff to make me go faster, and I, I really appreciate that. Ryan's currently sitting third in the late model points uh, behind Lee Pulliam and Philip Morris. Uh, so, obviously, some big names ahead of you. How much are you able to pick their brains, or, or are NASCAR drivers like Fisher and, and if their lips are moving, you know they're lying. Well, some of them, but <laughs> Phil Morris actually runs the same kind of chassis I do, and it okay. parks next to us most of the time. So I can I can pick his brain and know that it's legit information. Also, my crew chief used to run Pro Cup cars and was a competitor in the late model stock division here at uh, Motor Mile Speedway, and he ran us uh, for a number of years. So I, I get most of my information from my crew chief, Forrest nice. Reynolds, who um, runs Reynolds Racing Cassie, which is the company that I race for. All right. Well, give me, give me. I'll let you give a couple of plugs to some of your sponsors if you want to, real quick, before we let you guys get out of here. And then JW, I need to ask you one more question before we let you get off the air. Uh, so Ryan, who are some of your sponsors that we should look for on the car? I currently don't have any sponsors, but if you're looking to get in touch with me about becoming a marketing partner, you can contact me through any of my social medias or my website. Um, Facebook is Ryan Repco, Twitter is at Ryan underscore Repco 14, and my Instagram is at Ryan Repco, and my website is RyanRepco.com. That a boy, there you go, I like it. JW, uh, you guys have been teaching these guys well. Uh, what time does everything happen tomorrow? I, t I told you, man, we've got some impressive guys up here spanning all age groups. Um, real quick, gates yeah. open at 2, show starts at 7 p.m. Uh, come up early. We've got a uh, driver meet and greet going on at around 6 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Nothing but blue skies, no threat of rain. We hope to see everybody out tomorrow night. Man, sounds good. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Ryan, good luck in the race in this season. JW, I will talk to you next week, man, all right? You got it, Paul. Thanks All for right, having guys. Us on. Thank you very much. Take care. There you go. Ryan Repco, J.W. Martin, Motor Mile Speedway. Action gets underway tomorrow afternoon. Encourage you to get out. And J.W. is right, man. This is probably the first week that we have seen where they are going to have clear skies, no problems, no issues. You don't have to worry about the rain or anything like that. Ryan's just six. Dude, what were you? When I was 16, I was, I was driving, but... Up and down the driveway. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, around the neighborhood. Yep. Yeah, grandma, grandma would like you know the, she'd pass out from you know having a couple of tie. I'd take the old Buick mm -hmm. around. Yeah, that was no man, not around a net. Oh, you gotta love it. That that is awesome, man. That's what sports all about, right there. Hey, gotta say thank you to NASCAR Steve. Thanks to Coach Esh. Uh, the boys are now up two to one against uh, against. Uh, I believe they're playing against Tab, I believe is the school that they're playing in the uh, state soccer semifinals. Uh, hopefully they will win and move on to a state championship. Thanks to KG for joining us. Thanks to JW and Ryan. We'll talk to you all on Monday on The Drive. Hello? You're listening to ESPN.